thumbstick actually feels really nice. Everything else feels exactly the same. And you're gonna mod it! You're gonna ruin it! I, this does not need to be modded. However, I'm going to do it. God damn it! Because I because I need a video. <laughs> The new Nintendo Switch Online N64 controller feels really good. Pretty much exactly how an original N64 controller felt, but new. And I haven't felt that new feeling in over 25 years, so it feels really good to me now. Except for that sodding thumbstick and all the other various issues that make this thing useless outside of the Switch Online app. Look at how tiny and flimsy that thumbstick is. When I first took this thing out of the box, I marveled at how solid that thumbstick felt. But then once I started playing a game, I remembered why I hated this thing so much. Nintendo did a really good job making this controller feel authentic, which is great in some ways and really bad in a lot of others. This controller's layout is so weird by today's standards that if you wanna use this $50 controller with anything outside of the Switch Online app, there needs to be some sort of controller configuration options. But Nintendo gave us no options for anything like that. This controller is so similar to the original N64 controller, it made me wonder if we can fix it like a normal, regular old N64 controller. What's that inside look like? And what can it even do on the Switch outside of Nintendo's intended purposes? Is it even worth getting for anything outside of those nine games? This video is sponsored by Adorama. Oh, yes, this is beautiful. This is amazing. I love this. Oh my God, yes, yes. What? Ah, Chris Pratt's Garfield. In our line of work, you don't have time for problems like this. Prepare for these situations early before they ruin your shoot. Did you know about Adorama's VIP 360 program? It gives you two day free shipping on thousands of eligible products. Also, one year drops and spills protection. Use your gear without wearing it out in the field with their automatic one year accidental damage plan on eligible products. No need to buy individual protection plans for all your stuff. There's also a 60 day return policy with free return shipping, Adorama reward points upon shipping, access to a dedicated VIP 360 customer service representative, exclusive member only deals and much, much more. And all that is just $49.99 per year. If you're like me and you're constantly buying new equipment, you don't have to buy a protection plan on each individual item anymore. This covers almost everything that you're gonna get. So check out all the details at adorama.com slash G slash VIP 360 and start protecting your gear now. Finally, we're back in business, baby. Just move your arm just like this. Just move this arm just like, yes, yes. All this for a passport photo? Just move, just move this arm. Yes, yes, you're gorgeous, you're beautiful, I love you, just like that. By the way, tonight on twitch.tv slash AdoramXP, I'm gonna be giving a little tutorial on how I make my videos at 9 p.m. Eastern time, so set a reminder for yourself. Did I tell you to move that arm? Oh my God, I'm sorry. Before diving into this, I tried to find some teardowns on this new N64 controller, and I ran across VK's channel again. He's the guy who posted about that Joy-Con drift fix a couple months ago. Well, he's back at it again to let us know that this thumbstick might actually be worse than the original N64 thumbstick. You see, the original N64 controller stick box is made from a really weak and brittle plastic. So over time, the stick box will wear down. That's where all this white powder comes from. 
If you open up the stick box of an old, well-used N64 controller, you'll see a mess of white powder pour out. And it is very easy to wear down the stick box with just regular use. Games like Mario Party are notorious for making you rotate the stick vigorously, but even Mario 64 goes hard. The new N64 controller uses the same sort of thumbstick mechanism that the old N64 controller uses, so it will be prone to the same sort of wear and tear. But VK's channel notes that this new thumbstick might even be made of a weaker plastic, so it might even wear down quicker. Of course, where there's a problem, modders are going to find a solution. At least that's how it is on the original N64 controller. There exists a mod that replaces some of the stick box components with solid steel. This is probably the best way to preserve authenticity, but it's also insanely expensive. Looks pretty sick though. The most popular mod on the original N64 controller is probably replacing the thumbstick with a GameCube style thumbstick. The GameCube thumbstick isn't prone to the same sort of wear and tear. It'll last you a bit longer and it feels way, way better. This didn't even start out as a mod. If you've ever played N64 in a hotel room on one of those lodge net controllers, those had a rotating ball in the thumbstick, similar to how a GameCube thumbstick works. So this was a problem a long time ago and they acknowledged it and found a solution already. You can find these aftermarket GameCube styled stick boxes on Amazon for just $12. And it's a very simple mod to do on the original N64 controller. You just have to unscrew a couple of screws and then you just unplug the stick box and plug in the new one. I wanted to give this a try for a few reasons. My childhood N64 controller has seen better days. That thumbstick is looser than, Never mind, it's just loose. I bought another N64 controller off eBay, which had a bit of a better thumbstick. I decided to do the mod on the eBay one and put this tighter thumbstick into my childhood controller just to preserve its authenticity. And it ended up being a very easy swap. But that's on the original N64 controller. You probably see where I'm going with this. If you open up the new N64 controller, you'll see that it looks a little different on the inside. It's a lot cleaner with some more plastic and a new board. There's rumble built in, and of course, the, this thing has wireless and some buttons on top that the old one didn't have. But like we said before, the thumbstick is basically identical, except for that connection, which prevents this from being the plug and play mod it should have been. There's a six pin connector at the end of the wires of the original N64 controller thumbsticks, and there's only a four pin connector on this new one. And that's where this whole thought should have ended, but it did not. It's been three days since my new N64 controller has been in pieces on my desk. Three days of soldering and, and desoldering and resoldering. So don't do this. And I want to give a shout out to Layer Shift on Twitter. Who, he's the guy who made that Odin fight stick mod that I love so much that I talked about a while ago. We spent a few late nights on Twitter DMs going back and forth, trying to figure out exactly what the wiring map would look like on this new N64 controller thumbstick and how we can adapt the old one to the new one. It looks like this. It's not mapped like the original GameCube controller, even though that also only has a four pin connector. It's not mapped like the original N64 controller, and it's not even mapped like this new aftermarket GameCube controller mod that you'd put into an original N64 controller. So it's been a long three days. Now back to that horrible thumbstick. I like a good octagonal gate, but the one in the N64 controller feels really harsh. It makes you snap hard to a direction. Meanwhile, the N64 controller allows for a full 360 degrees of movement in the thumbstick. I actually found it harder to play games like Mario 64 with this thumbstick over even just a pro controller. But certain games like Ocarina of Time aren't gonna be so easy with a pro controller because you need those C buttons to function as buttons. Shooting arrows with a right stick just isn't the same. So I wanted so desperately to try to fix this thumbstick. The original N64 controller and even this new one, the thumbsticks both have potentiometers on the right and top of the thumbstick. And the new GameCube controller mod thing has a potentiometer on the right and bottom. This means when I bypassed the board and finally got everything working, the X axis was flipped. After all that work, 
This was a bit exciting that it kind of worked, but also very defeating. Of course, Nintendo gives you no options to invert this in the OS or in any of the games or anything. So it was back to the drawing board. But this has a bit of a happy ending because I did it. It's very jank, but we were able to get this to work. To make the X axis not flipped anymore, that potentiometer has to be on the top. So what we did was rotated the entire board of the thumbstick and then switched the X and Y axis. I promise that makes sense. That way, the potentiometer for the X axis can be on the top and the Y axis is basically exactly where it was. The problem there is then getting the board to fit in this case still. That took a lot of filing. And if I filed a little more, I probably could have gotten it perfect. I filed the spot on one side for the cables to run through. I filed the spot on the bottom left for the board to kind of stick out. And I filed off one of the little like screw prong things. Even though it's just kind of sitting in there, I didn't really screw it in. It's still holding on pretty good. The only problem is there is a mass of wires. And again, part of the board is just kind of sticking out. So it everything's a little tight. I, I, I couldn't close it all the way. With some more finagling, I'm sure I can get this pretty perfect. So it, it, there is a happy ending. It is possible. It's just not as easy as it used to be on the original N64 controller, but it could be. They could easily just make those types of boards just like they did for the original N64 controller. They can make them for this controller, but it does feel a lot better with this thumbstick than it did with the original thumbstick. I really hated that octagonal gate. I'm not as hindered by it. I feel like I have the full 360 degrees of movement here or the octagonal gate if I really wanted it. I'm sure some of you want to try this yourself and I encourage you to just get ready to absolutely mutilate and potentially break your brand new $50 controller. And I could have made this a tutorial, but I did not want to because I don't think I did a perfect job. And I think that you guys could probably do something better if you tried it yourself. I just wanted to show you that it is possible, show you whatever ideas me and Layer Shift came up with so that you guys can take that and run with it if you want to. Yo. One criticism of this mod on the original N64 controller was that the GameCube style thumbstick didn't have the same sort of sensitivity as the original N64 controller thumbstick. Also, the active area of the thumbstick didn't reach all the way to the end of the bounds of the stick box, but I'm happy to report on the Nintendo Switch at least, it looked like it worked just fine. It was a little less sensitive. Other than that, it felt fine though. It also was way more sensitive than just plugging an actual N64 controller in using one of those Hyperkin adapters. That created this sort of stepladder effect, which isn't there on the new N64 controller, even with this mod in place. If you'd like to try this mod for yourself, first of all, you're a very brave soul. Second of all, there do exist boards that you could probably finagle into that thumbstick and you could probably shove it in the case somehow. Today's day three of this, and I'm assuming it's not gonna go too great. Hey, it went really great. We, we figured it out. I'm very happy about it. But I wanted to include this in this video because I wanted to show you guys what I've been up to with this and why I'm so disappointed in how Nintendo handled this whole N64 situation, even outside of just the weird controller mapping. I mean, it works now, but it, yeah, it was made way harder than it had to be. It's still pretty disappointing. I don't blame them for making this controller like a pain in the ass to mod. I know it's a weird niche ask, but it is an additional disappointment on top of the laundry list of other disappointments I have with this thing. It could have been a cool controller to use outside of the Switch Online app, even if they just allowed for controller remapping. This is easily fixable in a firmware update, so I hope this is still a work in progress. Not many people are even able to get their hands on this thing. And if you order one now, it won't even ship till next year. So I'm not even so sure how much they'll support this controller. And for the people who did manage to get their hands on this controller, who knows how long that thumbstick will last. Now you can feel free to comment some stupid joke about how this $50 Nintendo Switch controller is gonna get stick drift. It's technically not stick drift. It's like stick paralysis. Hey, they make pills for that. Hey, they've sponsored this channel before. So 
What do you guys think about this new N64 controller? Did you manage to get one for yourself? Have you played around with it? Are you gonna hold off because it's not that great? I mean, if you're gonna play these Nintendo 64 games on Switch Online, it's pretty cool to have. $50 is a lot though. And like I said in a previous video, those aftermarket ones don't really work right. I'm hearing good things about the Hyperkin Admiral though, if you get a newer one with the firmware. There's also the uh, Retrobit Tribute I'm hearing good things about, but I, I don't have one. I never got my hands on one of those either. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments down below, at me on Twitter, any and all of this other social media garbage. Hey, thank you Adorama for helping sponsor this video. Don't forget tonight, I'll be on twitch.tv slash Adorama XP at 9 p.m. Eastern time to give like a little, I'll, I'll talk to you guys about how I make my videos and we can talk about gear and, and I can show you like premiere projects and stuff. Whatever questions you have, I can answer them. But thank you guys for watching and sitting through all, all, all this long diatribe. Uh, the most important thing that you can do to help support us here is just subscribe to the channel. YouTube's not good at showing you every video that I post, so if you turn on notifications, then you'll get to see every video. And share this video with a friend, a friend who maybe would want to try something like this on their own N64 controller. Maybe they can figure something out, put a new thumbstick in there. Thank you guys very much. Have yourself a good week.